today we are doing a tier list. What does this mean? If you've never seen a tier list before, it is pretty much where people rank items from S tier to F tier. It's normally S, A, B, C, and D, but I've changed D to F for absolute failure. I've done some Wikipedia searches and I've also went through almost every video that I've made covering MMOs and I've tried to find every single Eastern one. Now this list will exclude anything released in 2005 or before that. This list will also exclude games that I've never played. So as far as games that are excluded, Rusty Hearts, Ragnarok 2, never played them, Too Old, Cabal 1, Maple Story, the first Maple Story, and Fliff or Flife, don't know how to say it. But there are 30 games on here, 30. Okay, here's the list that I made. Okay, so S tier means it's godlike. I would recommend this game. I'd probably still be playing it if I didn't work so much. S is just, it's the best. A tier means that the game is above average. It's a good game. I'd recommend it. Had a good time with it. B tier means that the game is average. Usually C would be average, but for this list, B, it's average. C means that it's below average. It's kind of crap, but it's not the worst. F means absolute failure. This game is shit. I wouldn't recommend it, but keep this in mind, guys, because you may not know. This is all based off my opinion. So before anyone wants to kill me or raise their pitchforks, keep that in mind and use that energy to tell me what you would rank these games down below in the comment section. So are we cool? Can we move forward? Shake it. I'm glad we're in agreement. Thank you. Okay, so the first game, I'm just gonna go in no specific order, just go through these 30 different logos. The first one is Twilight Spirits. I couldn't even find a proper logo for this game. Twilight Spirits, if you don't remember, was, yeah, I'm just taking a guess that it is developed by the Chinese. It definitely reminds me of it. This game went to shit pretty fast. It looked good at first, but once I played it, I was like, uh, this is kind of bad. And also everything that I'm ranking right now is off of Cry in 2019. So my opinions may have been different back in the day. I might have thought that, wow, this game's amazing. And now I think, you know what? Reflecting on the past, that game's actually shit. Twilight Spirits is gonna go in the F tier. That, it's not a good game. Fantasy Star Online 2. I love Fantasy Star Online 2. And we are actually getting PSO2 next year. As far as gameplay goes, it's not the most revolutionary thing, but it's fun and it has some of the best costume and accessory customization I've ever seen. I would play the game just for that and the cool collaborations that they have that come to the game. So Fantasy Star Online 2, I'm going to give an A. Another thing I didn't mention is that this list will also feature MMO lights. They're not necessarily MMO RPGs. They still classify themselves as that on like Steam with tags and shit, but never does it really feel massive. Some of them do feel massive in the hub. PSO2 can have like, I don't know, 100 players or it, it can look pretty packed, but there are different channels. And when you go out on missions, it's never like 100 players. Uh, Vindictus would be a good example of an MMO light. So just keep that in mind. Fantasy Star Online 2, I'm gonna put that A tier. Would highly recommend it. Wouldn't say it's godlike. Maybe if it had better gameplay, maybe if it was a bit more massively multiplayer, but I love PSO2. Astelia, I'm not gonna put Astelia as an absolute failure, but this game was painfully average to me. So I'm gonna put it below average. They definitely tried with the pet system, but that's about it to me. It seems like a very generic MMORPG that just added this pet system to kind of make itself stand out, and it didn't really work for me. Guild Wars 2, so I've played Guild Wars 2, I've got like a max level character, I've started, wait, hold on. Hold on, bro. I gotta do a quick Google search. <laughs> Guild Wars 2. Wait a second. That's not on this list. Lost Ark is A tier. Fucking amazing. Not a fan of isometric games. Isometric being top down, Diablo, dungeon crawler like games, Path of Exile. I don't like it. The game's still fun. The animations are insane. Would highly recommend it. It's almost godlike. It would be godlike if. It wasn't isometric if it felt more immersive because isometric games break my immersion arc age i don't play arc age anymore people have been asking me i don't play arc age it's not because the game's bad it's not because the publishers did anything that affected me or my opinion about the game it's because i don't have the time i thought that i could keep up but 
doing those dailies to stay relevant, to progress my gear, even doing it at my own pace, I'll never reach where I want to reach in the time that I want to reach that like gear level, you know? To PVP and actually stand a chance. I don't have time for the dailies. I don't have time to make gold through trade runs and shit every day. Dedicating hours to that while also making YouTube content and working. I just, I can't do it. But Arcage, that's S tier, baby. Sorry if you hear like background noise. It's a bit hard to record without it. Arcage is S tier because you got naval combat. You can sell the ocean. It's an open world. You can be a farmer, a merchant, a pirate. There's faction versus faction, top tier PVP. It's tab targeting, but how good you have to be with reaction to counter your opponent. All the different class combinations, though only a handful are viable. It's an amazing game. It's been through some shit with publishers and developers, but I don't think I've ever had any MMO-like experience that I've had with Arcage. Okay, next is Ascent Infinite Realm. When I first played this game, it was C tier because it was a Bless Online clone. Then I played the Thailand version and it bumped it up to B, the game's average. It's pretty good. At the same time, still kind of feels clunky. I do think it's going to be exciting upon release. I don't know if people will stick around. Can't really point out the reason why. I just feel like the hype will die down for this game pretty quickly. I think Fever put out a video where he's played it for quite some time. And if you listen to his video, he'll give you a very good overview. I've made a few videos on it. I was doing a series, another series that came to an end. And this is because... I couldn't log in for some reason, so I just kind of gave up and said, fuck this, I'll wait for release. Our Kingdom. I played Our Kingdom a bit. This game is below average to me. Very cute, just below average. Kingdom Under Fire 2, we recently played this. You should watch my video on it. I think the game's pretty good. It's different, but average. I did say different. It's definitely different. It allows you to go into this RTS war simulator and also go into action combat, then it feels like an MMO, but it still feels a bit generic when it comes to questing and just the dialogue and the whack voice acting. In the instances, like it still feels like a generic MMO. It's just the RTS saves it and bumps it up a little bit. So I'd say this game's average. I'd recommend you try it, but I wouldn't say, wow, this is a great game you need to play it. Dragon Nest. I haven't played too much of Dragon Nest. The combat was amazing from what I played and we can't really like compare this to current gen games because this shit's pretty old but I will say based off what I played I'm gonna give it average. I think if I played a lot of it during the time that it released I'd probably put it a tier. The combat was like revolutionary for its time and a lot of games are inspired by Dragon Nest till this day. Black Desert Black Desert, easily A. The graphics are amazing, though it has a shit ton of pop in. Black Desert is just the kind of game where if you want an MMORPG where you feel like there's endless progression and you like grinding, BDO all the way. Character design, costume design, combat, all top tier. The thing that ruins it is that it doesn't have meaningful PvE. If it did, it would probably be S tier. I understand that traveling by horse is meant to be a more immersive experience, but you gotta admit that shit's annoying. It's truly gonna take me 25 minutes to get from one part of the map to the other. I'm recording and I'm like, you know what? Wait a second. 45 minutes of this recording is me on a fucking horse. Blade and Soul. That's, that's A baby, above average. I love Blade and Soul. Top tier 1v1 PVP. Had a good experience with it, don't play it anymore, but it does have PVE as well. That, Seems pretty difficult, and every time I hop in Blade and Soul, I have fun, so. I don't know if it's the most popular thing in the world right now, but it's getting a Unreal Engine 4 update, and I think around then, a lot of people will return to the game. So Blade and Soul is still making moves, and yeah, I'd recommend it. Cabal, this is not Cabal 1, this is Cabal 2. One of the first, first impressions that I've done on this channel, and this shit is horrible. This is one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. I don't even understand why they made it. A lot of people told me that this makes Cabal look bad. They're like, dude, please don't judge it based off of two. This is horrible. Ion. I'm gonna put Ion as above average. The game for its time and what it offers, PVP, PVE, good PVP. Lots of cool classes and paths that you can take flying i like ion okay that's what i'm saying above average l sword 
L Sword is average to me. Definitely unique for what it is, but it's not something that I would recommend for people, nor is it something that I would say don't play. If you like side scrollers, if you want Super Smash Brothers, the MMO, then maybe this is for you, but not for me. Eternal Magic. I uh, covered this not too long ago. Very generic looking game. Plays pretty generic, but to my surprise, it felt good. I hear that this game's extremely pay to win. Chinese developer, Russian publisher, but I enjoyed it for some reason. It's about as generic as it gets, but it was enjoyable. <laughs> so it's gonna be average. Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, this is gonna be f S tier. You thought I was gonna put an F tier? What's wrong with you? This is my favorite MMORPG at the moment. I just, I feel like I'm never bound to it by chains, where if I don't do my dailies, then I'm fucked. If I do my raid once a week, that's pretty much like the only thing that makes me feel like I have to get on and do something. Housing, good PVE. The PVP department kind of lacks, but it's getting better, that's for sure with recent updates. Many people told me that it was shit. When I started it and played with a few friends, I enjoyed it. I just, I love this game. It's beautiful. PVE can be hardcore and pff, the glamor system. Yes, 14, S tier. Moonlight Blade. You guys are gonna hate me for this, but this one's average. Moonlight Blade Combat. So, you know what? I take that back. This one's above average. Moonlight Blade's combat is amazing. Yeah, so I'll explain why. Moonlight Blade is pretty unique, but once you actually play it, it doesn't feel as good as it looks. You watch it and it sometimes looks really smooth, but when you play it, it feels very stiff outside of using your skills. And one thing I don't like about it, this is personal, this is very opinionated, but from what I played and what I've seen, it doesn't feature any real fantasy elements. Sure, you're flying, you're using magical ass skills, I get it. There's no like dragons or giant beast, it's pretty much all humans, all humanoids, and that's really boring to me. I understand it's a more traditional styled MMORPG, but I want that feeling of magic. I want the game to feel fantasy-like. Bless Online. This game at least went from being an A as far as hype goes and like from looks to being a B. Just average as shit. No, it was below average based off gameplay in Korea. And then it came to the West and very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. A series of unfortunate events. Revelation Online. Who? So, we're talking 2015, 2016, almost four years ago. I haven't been this excited since, since Arkage. So there was like a two year gap, and I saw this scene of like a sunset, and a will that could fit 40 players on it. And just... I'll never trust a word he says. Get, grow the fuck up, dude. It's been like four years. It's time to pull your head out of your asshole and breathe. Your head's so tight in your ass that you're true. You're literally narrow-minded. Your fucking shit's closing in. You need to pull it out. Expand that brain of yours and realize that people change. Fuck me. So Revelation went from an A to a C. I'm not going to call it a complete failure. I think the game, although generic, it was kind of coming out around the time before we started seeing so many copy pasta Chinese games. So we weren't really noticing at that time, but a bit generic, but still, if you were to hop into it now, you'd be like, wow, massive world. I can fly around, I can get married, have a house, dungeons, like still a cool game, just absolutely ruined by the publishers. Critica Online is going to be, I would probably put this C tier. But since I played it recently and had a lot of fun with it with a new class, it's going to be B tier. It's not a game that I think you should dedicate your life to or expect to have fun with every day. But hopping into this game for a couple hours or uh, just to have some quick fun, I think it's perfect for that. Kurt's Pill? Kurt's Pill is average to me. It could be better if it had more to do. Feels like you're trapped in a cage. You're like just trapped in a cage and all you can do is arenas and arenas and arenas and pve like arenas so just like challenges but you're just stuck on this this little hub and even when you go out into instance missions they don't feel giant it 
feels like another cage. Riders of Icarus, bro, we're not even gonna talk about this. That's straight up failure. <laughs> Vindictus. You guys would probably think that I would put this average, but this is going to be above average. Vindictus is old as shit, but Vindictus plays so good. The combat still holds up to this day. It's probably top three combat for me. I, I Yeah, I love Vindictus. It, it kind of looks like shit, and the optimization is really bad, but the combat puts it above average. Echo of Soul is below average, without a doubt. I liked it at first, enjoyed it at first, and if you look at the art, you'd be very misled. You'd think that, wow, this is gonna be amazing. But then once you play it, you're like, this is really generic. But it's a good generic. Almost as good as Eternal Magic generic, but not quite. Uh, Maple Story 2, I'm gonna put average. It was fun. I liked the housing system, the combat and stuff, but not quite my kind of game. Just felt like a, a mini game. This is Closers Online. I know the logo is cut off. Closers Online was, and I know this pissed people off when I said it, but Closers Online for me, it plays like L Sword. Closers Online is below average for me. This is an MMO light, so it plays like L Sword, it's a side scroller, dungeon crawler, side scroller kind of thing, but I just didn't like it. It felt like it wanted to be a side scroller, but also wanted to be like Soul Worker, just somewhere in between. I guess this plays like Dungeon Fighter Online, which maybe I should have put on this list, but I've never played it. I played Dungeon Fighter for maybe 15 minutes to realize it's not for me. Those controls, I can't get used to keyboard controls. I suck, I know. Hero Wars would be average. Hero Wars was fun. I think it got shut down. Might be coming back, I don't know. Hero Wars is an isometric dungeon crawler, anime-like MMO light, and this was, it was fun, but it was average. Soul Worker, above average. Soul Worker is another MMO light, but the graphics and the gameplay, really good. The customization and the grindiness almost makes me want to put this average, but I think based off the combat alone, I'll probably keep it above average. I think the game is, I won't say dead, but doesn't have the biggest population anymore, so it's probably really hard to find help at the lower levels. It's getting new characters still, it's getting new updates, and the combat will always be pretty damn good. Then we have Terra. Terra is going to be above average for me. I still love Terra. I think Terra has potential to be, if it was still thriving, if it was better optimized and they have made recent changes to optimization to make it better. I haven't tried the PvP lately, but if it was where you can go into a battleground and actually have a smooth experience, lots of people are still playing. Maybe they got rid of some of the more goofy ass things in it, like you have like badass characters walking around in armor and shit but then you have like a loli in a mini police car just zooming around the map shit like that just kind of ruins the game for me all in all i think terra has potential to be s tier but it is uh just kind of kind of a dry game now i don't know anyone that still plays terra actively i can't name any friends or acquaintances that do i always have a good time with terra not s rank but a rank this is my eastern mmorpg tier list yeah I, th I think we got some good ones here i'm sure a lot of people will disagree with many of my points so thanks for watching i will catch you all in the next one see you soon friends